when this topic was discussed with me, the first thought that came to mind was what was the advice that I have been given, which I hold dear. And two things came to my mind, both from my grandmother, one who told me decades ago that I can go and conquer the world if I want to. I just have to put my heart to it. And the second piece of advice also from her saying, I would need to watch my weight for the rest of my life, <laughs> given the genes that I have. And the second part, of course, is what would I say to my girls? I'm a mother of two young girls. What would I say to them? A lot of the same that we are perhaps in agreement with as parents, whether it's boy or, boy or girl, believe in yourself, love yourself for who you are. I would have to tell my girls to watch their weight too, given my genes, but along with that, I would tell my girls about key moments that have shaped us, shaped me in particular. Nirbhai or Jyoti Singh, how we all walk, walked together, marched together, the story of, say, a Sony Sori, or transgender Lakshmi, who's gone on to written to write her own book, which has been so well received. So there's just so much that all of us can bring to the table when it comes to what we can do with our daughters and all the advice that we were given and how we would tweak that for generations ahead. Let me get started right away. Very fortunate to have a stellar panel uh, right here. Let me start uh, by introducing them. Justice Leela Seth, India's first woman chief justice, someone who needs no introduction. My other guest, uh, uh, Farooq Saab, Dr. Farooq Abdullah, we just uh, heard him, uh, one of India's most uh, flamboyant and well-loved politicians. Uh, uh, Nidhi Dubey, country director, Girl Rising India campaign uh, for girls' uh, education. There's Raghu Rai, one of India's leading uh, photographers. You are familiar with his work, even if sometimes people can't connect the face to, to the work. And last but not the least, Aarti Devi, Sarpanch, and in fact, one of India's youngest Sarpanches. Thanks all so much for taking our time to be with us today. <coughs> Leela Seth, ma'am, if I could just say to you, to all these girls sitting here, these women sitting here, and all the others who will hear you, if there's one thing that you would say to finish the sentence, listen up, girls, what would it be? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, but be aware. That's very important. Because, uh, of course, you need good education not to be afraid. And you need to be aware because uh, the world is not a simple place where you can go anywhere without fear. But take, go, do what your heart tells you to do. Listen to it. And don't worry if your parents tell you to go a different way. Right. Listen to yourself. Right. Be confident and be listen to yourself. But, know, but look it through, because they, you must know the consequences. I think that's really what the message I would give you. Right. Just don't be afraid. Right. Follow your heart. That's something yes. you would agree with, Farooq Saab, wouldn't you entirely? <laughs> yes, I would agree with it. But I'd also say, aim high. You can achieve if you want to achieve that. There's nothing that will stop you. But have faith in God and have faith in yourself. If you have these two things, hmm. you will conquer. Right. Good if I, luck. If I could just ask you uh, here, sir, very quickly, what is the one piece of advice that you believe that you've given your daughters that's held them in good stead? And with the wisdom of hindsight, the one thing that you them, did not tell them, I told that them you wish very you had. frankly, think well and do exactly what you feel you want to do. Right. Right. Don't be afraid, as the, her lordship has said, right. that <laughs> right. we must yeah. never be afraid. And think before you leap. Right. Think That's before you leap. That's all of us. Right. So listen to your heart, but think before you leap. Yes. So, so do think it out somewhere. No, in, you in, have in, to think. Right. You can't just jump blindly. Right. You right. have to think. Right. Right. Raghu Rai, as, as someone uh, who sort of seen India's daughters, India's women through his lens, and is also the father of young girls, what is the one thing that you believe that your daughters ought to take, or the one, one thing, the one message from you that you believe that your daughters ought to carry to become the kind of people that you hope they do? Well, that one message needs a larger connection. You know. That first thing, connect, listen, and absorb. And then see what your heart tells you. It's simple. You know, basically, that's what we all need to do, and this is how we can live vibrantly. And there are many examples, you know, of these young little ladies, you know, where they express themselves in, with such a strength and clarity, because 
they've been living like this. Mm. Maybe there are lots of people who would say that the, the one advice that people were given decades ago is not, some, is not always what you can give a generation that's going to sort of be coming into its own, say, two decades from now. What is the one thing that you would tweak, or what has changed? I think, you know, we keep talking about, and what I completely agree with everyone, you know, that's saying that we really need to follow our passion, and I think that's really important. Dream big, nothing's going to stop you. Uh, you can do anything that you want to. I would just add that, you know, do it, do it with conviction. Mm. Just believe in yourself, because, you know, be part of the change that you want create that change. Don't wait for others to make it happen because right. we're just part of that journey. So right. just be, go out there and you are going to be an important uh, stakeholder in making that change. Make that change. And someone who's done that is Aarti. Aarti, you are who politics in politics and politics involved. When you have done it, what do you Rose Logan ko samjhana padta tha ki mujhe ye karna hai, mujhe ye karne dije. Yahan sab bol rahe follow your heart. Soch lije, but follow your heart. Jo dil mein hai, wo kariye. But reality aapke liye kaisi thi? Main pehle job karti thi bank mein, lekin jis society ko mera zarurat hai, main abhi usi society mein kaam kar rahi hu. In my opinion, aisa nahi hai ki humko ladka jaise banna hai. Jaise sun ka ek energy hai, hawa ka ek energy hai. ऐसे औरत का भी एक एनर्जी है इसी एनर्जी को हमको यूटिलाइज करना है और आगे बढ़ना है इसलिए मैं मेरे गांव में सारे औरत को लेकर मैं काम कर रही हूं और आगे बढ़ रही हूं इन माय ओपिनियन देयर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन द बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स इन माय पंचायत आई आल्सो इंप्लीमेंट दिस थिंग्स को मैं इस चीज को मैं मेरा पंचायत में इंप्लीमेंट कर रही हूं और स्वतंत्र महिला ग्राम सभा में बुलाती हूं और काम करती हूँ क्योंकि हमारा राज्य में 50 परसेंट रिजर्वेशन दिए हैं उमेन के लिए तो उसको आगे लेने के लिए महिला को आगे आना है आना है इसलिए मैं स्वतंत्र महिला ग्राम सभा करती हूँ और उसी हिसाब से जिस क्षेत्रों में एजुकेशन और स्वास्थ्य और एक्चुअल उमेन इंपारमेंट ग्रामांचल के जरूरत है को वहाँ के मैं काम कर रही हूँ और उसी हिसाब से मैं आगे बढ़ रही हूँ और ऐसी स्टोरीज हैं जो बहुत और लड़कियों को इंस्पायर करेंगी इस देश में जस्ट से यू नो द सिनिक्स वुड से दैट फॉर ऑल द टॉक अराउंड विमेन्स इंपावरमेंट देस यू नो ऑन द ग्राउंड द स्टोरीज आर स्टिल वेरी हॉरिफिक वी आर स्टिल अ सोसाइटी वेर रिवेंज अगेंस्ट men in a family still taken through their women, whether it's rape or acid attacks. So how much has really changed? You have seen 21 years ago the situation, you're seeing the present, and you will see the future as well. Where do you believe we are? Is the glass half full, half empty? You know, I think that the laws have changed. Mm. I see for myself, I'm 85 years old, so I've seen a lot, and I can see that the laws have changed, mm. but the mindsets have not changed. And you know, it's a slow process, changing mindsets. And unless we change mindsets, we're not going to get a real change on the ground. Mm. Because eventually it's the implementation of law. Mm. How do you implement it? It's the way people are, you know, it's not something that will happen overnight. Mm. And I think for that you need education. And that's why I'm very keen that children right from the start, when they, in, I mean, in nursery school, from there onwards they should be taught mm. that there's equality everywhere for girls and boys. Right. They should know that there's, there's to be no difference between them. And it's parents and teachers who have to do that, you know. Right. So unless you put it in their minds from then, right. it's not going to happen easily. Right. Right. So I think that's, that's the lesson, you know. Right. You have to start there. Right. And that's something that you did, Parukram. Of course, many would say that, you know, more liberal and broad-minded <laughs> families tend to do that. But how would you, did you ever have to reconcile the, the family, the home that you were bringing up your girls in, to the more conservative society that existed outside the boundaries of the house? Yes. There is a still... India is still conservative. Uh, there is no doubt about it. We still do not want the women to rise to the level where the man will feel inferior. That's unfortunate. It is there. And you can see even today's paper where the young lady was burnt. After three years or something, she went home. And her brother didn't accept her marrying somebody out of the caste. And these things are happening in the world, all over. Mm. And more so in, in the communities of India. Mm. And this 
will take time to change. It will change. It will, there is nothing that will not change. But it hasn't come to that stage. Mm. That man must now realize mm. that he has to give her that space, mm. which is for her. Mm. See, we are incomplete without women. There is no doubt about it. But if we still feel we are God Almighty, mm. and they are down there. That has to change. If India has to move forward, mm. and India has to grow to a, being a, the most important nation in the world, mm. then the women's empowerment is very, very important. Right, right from the grassroots mm. people to the higher sector. Right. That doesn't exist right. as yet. That will take time. Mm. But we must continue to fight. The women's empowerment started somewhere in 1911. Mm. And still we are not reach that stage where we would like to see them is equal. By making a lady president or making her a speaker, it's a tokenism. Uh, it's a tokenism. Right. It is nothing much. Mm. Unless the very grounds, the realities change mm. for the future of these women. Right. Raghu Rai, sir, when you look at your daughters, when you talk to your daughters, and you know, they've, how did how do you believe they see you? Because there are lots of parents, you know, who sort of always wonder, how do our children see us for all the talk yes. and all that we have learned? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a very nice little incident. Speak Mackey, they ask us to go to schools and colleges to speak to young minds. So, you know, once I was asked to go to uh, Nanital to speak to high school girls, so my wife told my daughter, Purvai, who was just nine years of age, why don't you go with Papa? Hmm? He's going to Nainital, beautiful hill station. You can have a holiday with Papa. So for three, four days, we drove around, we did boating, everything, sightseeing. And on the fourth day, I had to talk to the students. So this little girl, nine years old, she also came in. She sat at the end of the class quietly. I didn't even notice. So after an hour and a half of talk and interaction, this child, nine years old, comes to me and very softly she tells me, Papa, you spoke very well. And the way she said was so delightful <laughs> and so genuine. I said, thank you, baby. <laughs> so I was really, I said, my day is made. So after a few months, I was asked to go somewhere else. And my wife tells Purvai, Purvai, why don't you go with your papa? She says, oh, mama, give me a break. <laughs> I have heard him once. That's enough. I loved it. Never again. <laughs> the, the, which means the child was so alert, connected, and absorbed everything. Right. She doesn't want to hear anything more again right. from this father who speaks the same language at the right. end of the day. <laughs> So, you know, these are the examples, you know, where, where I say, wow, these children are so amazing. You know? So did you then end up tweaking your talk, the second talk? It was not a copy-paste of the first one. Did you end up changing that? Sorry? Did you end up changing the talk, the second talk that you were no, going for? Now I make sure, you know, that, you know, when I look at the, uh, you know, the energy and the feeling of the people, then I try to respond accordingly, you know. Right. Because that's what I learned from her. Right. Enough. Right. And no more. Maybe, you know, as someone who's working with girls' education, there are all those who would argue that education can only take us so far. It's very, very important, the point that I also made, but it can only take us so far. What about the entire ecosystem when you step out of those classrooms, that learning? Where is the space to implement that? And that's the kind of real change that we're talking about and still lacking. No, I agree. I, I don't think education uh, alone can empower, but I do want to emphasize on the significance of it just for a moment. Because, I mean, let's just look at some statistics. I mean, 200 million women are illiterate in our country. 3.7 million girls are out of school today. Mm -hmm. And we know, I mean, strategic development goals have set it out that if every girl gets 12 years of school education, it can actually bring down child marriages, early birth, under five mortality. So we know the benefits of it. We know that, um, I mean, Lawrence Summers, the uh, former Ch World Bank chief, says that investing in girls' education is the smartest investment that one can make today. 
While that being said, I completely agree. I think we have to look at holistic uh, growth, which is you know mental, social, physical, emotional growth, and that will actually help our boys and girls equally to be part of um, society building, building more equitable uh, society in a more uh, you know dem democratic and more humanistic right. way. So I definitely think it's overall and not just limited to education itself. Right, fair enough. Farooq sir, do you have any such example? Like, uh, See, I'd like to yeah. just tell all these people that I went to the Agriculture University, Shri Krishna Agriculture University, about two days ago. And I asked them, what is the proportion of women to mm. men mm. in this institution? They said 40% mm. are girls, and 60% are boys. I told them, I saw these people somewhere in pisciculture, somewhere in agriculture, somewhere in horticulture, somewhere in floriculture. It's fine. They will get their degrees. But have we ever thought, what are they going to do with these degrees? Unless we create avenues for them. And that is where empowerment will come. Just mere education is not enough. What the governments now and people who have ideas about it should sit down and start thinking that here we've got this batch of people, what is their future? Beyond all are going to be employed, degrees, all right. are going to be employed with the government. Mm. So are we creating avenues for them so that they can stand on their feet? Mm. Otherwise, just mere degrees mm. are no use. Mm. And that is where we are slipping. And this is what governments must start thinking, and other institutions must start thinking. How do we channelize their future while they have these huge degrees, PhDs and all these things? And that we are not doing. And then how do you empower women? They'll still be dependent tomorrow when they marry. They'll have a degree, they'll marry, and the husband will be working. She'll still be housewife. <coughs> not in contributing in any other way hmm. for that house to get right. better. Right. This is something we are sleeping on. Right. And I hope hmm. that in this discussion that we are having here, hmm. and people that are here, hmm. will start thinking hmm. as to what do we do. What next? What right. next? What yes. Right. Not only in agriculture, right. in, in IITs, in all these things. Across we the have, board. across the board, right. we have to start thinking. What do you believe, ma'am, is the biggest challenge that we're well, looking at? You know, at? I think uh, there should be professional education, not just... Uh, I know my mother was 35 years old when my father died. We were four children. I was 11 years old and my brother was nine. She had no training to do anything. There was no money because in those days she got a small provident fund. There was no pension. And so we literally lived off friends, scholarships, and some family. And, but she said, education is the most important thing. Right. And somehow she squeezed herself and with friends' help, she educated us. And we are today where we are because of that education she gave us. And, and she pushed us, you know, and we realized it. And therefore, I think every girl should not only get a degree. I mean, degrees are these days, you know, that should have not a so professional tough. qualification. Right. And when I became a, a lawyer, there were two women practicing in the court. Mm -hmm. And now you go into a court, there are plenty, and I'm told in, college, in law colleges, uh, the thing is 60 to 40, 60 in favor of girls. Right. So you know, there is a you huge change. You can take some for that, I'm, so I'm quite sure no, about No, you know, there's a huge change. But as we say, the mindset is not changing fast enough. Right. Society is not changing fast enough. Right. And many of these girls, when they get married, their husbands won't let them work, or mm. their families won't let them work. Mm. So that's where the difficulty comes. Right. That's why you have to see that the men are also very supportive. I think, you know, I, I succeeded only because my husband was very supportive. And my family also supported me in that sense. I mean, not that there was never guilt. I remember once uh, my son Vikram said, someone told him, your mother's very intelligent. He says, I don't care how intelligent she is. She's never here when I want her. Oh, I, I had gone to court. So when I came back and I heard this, I thought maybe I should give up practice. I had a guilt feeling. Right. And then I was thinking about it. And three days later, he said to me, uh, Thank God you work, Mama. You always talk about such interesting things, not just about the servants' uh, salaries and their foibles and the vegetable price. So then I got my answer. You know, it's like that. So you, 
it has to be the society must also support you. Yeah. You know, the your children, family must also the support you. Children and what they say really, you know, <coughs> when you sort of look well, back. Yeah, it's very important, you. you know, because I, I mean, you, uh, women also feel a sense of guilt because they feel they're the responsible ones. Yeah. Now men have to support, the, the, go to parent-teacher meetings if the wife can't go, if the mother can't go. Right. You know, they have to be supported. Right. Any such moments uh, from when the kids were young, Farooq Saab, and things that they said? I'm sure that they also said that you weren't at home enough. <laughs> I was so busy running around here and there with the right. politics that basically my wife really has contributed to what my children today are. Right. She's the one who put into them what was right and what is wrong. Mm. And I think I should be grateful to her. That is quite uh, candid and honest and giving credit where it's uh, due. Aarti, the thing is that society is not changing fast enough. How many people want to change the world, but the people in the past don't give them so much support as much as they need. You work on the ground level. What do you think of that? Gender inequality is the most important thing. It's among the most. You are doing the same thing, but the rest of the girls are doing the same thing. करने का शायद मन हो सकता है, लेकिन उनको मौका ही नहीं दिया जाता, उनकी आवाज़ ही कोई नहीं सुनता। क्या ये आपका एक्सपीरियंस भी रहा है? मेरा जो एक्सपीरियंस है, पहले उनका परिवार लोगों उसको हेल्प करना चाहिए, और उसको आगे बढ़ाने के लिए एक औरत और एक औरत को हेल्प करना चाहिए, तो तभी एक एडल्ट एजुकेशन शुरुआत की जिसका नारा हमने रखा है नो थर्म इम्प्रेशन ओनली सिग्नेचर उसी हिसाब से जितना 18 इयर्स से 45 इयर्स लड़की लोग हैं उसको हम सावालों को शिक्षा आंदोलन शुरुआत की और उन लोग को पढ़ाए उन लोग को के लिए गवर्नमेंट को हमने जो इतना सारा गवर्नमेंट का आता है प्रोविजन उन लोग के पास पहुंच नहीं पा रहा है ये मुख्य समस्या है अगर हम लोग उसको हेल्प करेंगे और आगे बढ़ाने के लिए सोचेंगे पहले सचेतना होना चाहिए सबको ट्रेनिंग देना चाहिए ग्रामांचल में जो ज़्यादा लोग तो ग्रामांचल में रहते हैं औरत लोग उन लोग को तो सब जरूरत है इमोन इंपारमेंट का जो तो इसीलिए उन लोग को पढ़ाए और स्माल इंडस्ट्री अभी हम शुरुआत किए हैं क्योंकि जब तक एक इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट नहीं हो रहा है एक औरत आगे नहीं बढ़ पाएगा ये एक मेन प्रॉब्लम है क्योंकि अभी जो सोसाइटी है शहरांचल में ज़्यादा लोग उमेन लोग इंपारमेंट हो गए अच्छा सेक्टर में नौकरी कर रहे हैं किंतु ग्रामांचल में तो वो लोग अभी पहुंच नहीं पा रहा है वो सब चीज़ तो वहाँ के ज़्यादा ज़रूरत है और मेरा ओपिनियन है औरत लोग को या महिला लोग को वेलकम करना चाहिए उसको सेफ देना चाहिए और उन, उनके लिए जो जो जरूरत है हम लोग को हेल्प करना चाहिए एक औरत औरत के लिए ही पहले हेल्प करेंगे तो वो आगे बढ़ेंगे हर चीज हम लड़का के ऊपर नहीं छोड़ना चाहिए अपना जो खुद का एनर्जी है इसको यूटिलाइज करना है और आगे बढ़ना है हम क्यों लड़का के पीछे हमेशा पढ़ते है वो लोग को सब मिलता है हमको कुछ नहीं मिल रहा है ऐसा नहीं है हमारे पास बहुत सारे एनर्जी है हम कुछ भी कर सकते हैं चेंज द डिस्कोर्स रियली जिस तरह हम इसको अप्रोच करते हैं हमें क्यों नहीं मिल रहा है नहीं हमें मिल मिलना चाहिए मिलना चाहिए हमको करना है आगे बढ़ना है मैं तो मेरा बेटी को बोलूँगी स्काई इज़ नॉट द लिमिट फ्लाई फ्लाई आज यू कैन यू आर वेलकम यू आर Raghu Rai, one of your iconic images is my father, my son, which is a young child grasping his father's hand. If I were to ask you, what would my father, my daughter be? What is the image that, well, to your mind, will describe India's girl? Well, and why isn't there a my father, my daughter, may I ask? Uh, how I wish it was a daughter's hand. <laughs> it will be even more tender and gentler than a boy's hand. But it so happened that a boy was my first child in the family. <laughs> And the grandfather came to see him. And the way grandfather is cushioning these tender little hands, that goes more so in girls' cases. You know, we love and we protect our girls more than the boys. You know, my son thinks that this dad doesn't belong to me, he doesn't love me, because he's always talking about his daughters. 
Karusta, did you laugh because that you, you identify with that statement? Does that happen with you? I just remember how I've seen on the streets. Even if the, the sister is younger and the brother is older, you will still see sister with tenderness protecting the brother. Right. You will never see brother protecting the sister. You'll watch the street, you'll see this. Right. And this I've seen const constantly at times. It just shows. Kashmiri or ban makhane. Beni chai thun, the boy chi kai. The tenderness of the sister is like the butter, right. and the tenderness of the brother is like the stone. I see. That's an old saying in Kashmir. Uh, but I, I, I don't exactly agree. I think that there are many brothers who take care. <laughs> I must stand up for the men. I think that, you know, uh, there are many brothers who do take care. I mean, I know now, um, you know, uh, girls have equal rights hmm. with boys into their family property, property in the right. father's property. Right. And, <clears throat> and sometimes the girls won't ask for it because they think their brothers will be unhappy. Hmm. Sometimes the girls, don't, if, they, if they don't get it, don't fight for it. Hmm. But there are times when the brother gives it even if the father has willed it all to him. I mean, I've come across cases like that where the father has willed his property entirely to his son. Right. And the son said, you are equally entitled, you right. have a half share, right. and my father has made a mistake, I will give you half. So there, is, there are brothers and who are and, and their brothers. That is so I think, you know, I think, you know, we can't uh, put a brush Paint across all, all men. I, 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 I must say, I love my men, I right. love my husband, I love my sons, so I can't paint <laughs> them black. Right. Right. <laughs> and I'll say for my husband, he's extremely supportive. Yeah. There was a time when, you know, uh, there was a lot of, Every ha marriage has some problems. And I said to him, I'll give up my work because it's causing a lot of tension. Mm. And he said to me, no, they're like mm. two hands. Mm. One is your work hand and one is your family hand. Right. I can't ask you to cut off one. We'll adjust. Right. So I think that's, that's what men are about, you know, and right. I think that's important. Right. Right. <coughs> Maybe there are all those, you know, the cynics would say that when we talk about uh, women empowerment or, is you know, to, uh, the issues around the girl child, there are lots of boxes that we often tick. But actually, are we really putting our heart into everything that we are talking about? How would you answer that? You know, actually, I'll just go back to what um, uh, Ma'am said, said earlier. It is just about, I mean, we can, we can look at everything. Girls' education, girls' empowerment mm. program, or opportunity for you know, employment and all of that. And there's but, no dearth of these programs. Yeah, right? absolutely. But I think what's really important, and what she said earlier, was that whole mindset change. Mm. Because we really need to, as much as we work with girls, but we need to engage with boys mm. and men mm. you know, into the campaign. Because I think just talking about girls' empowerment campaign. With women alone. Uh, right? Yeah, with right. women alone absolutely. is not going to get us right. anywhere. There. Right. And that is the change that we see mm. that is happening today, right. but that is something that we need to do. The other thing that I would say, and we're working on this campaign, which is very simple if you go to see, it's all about encouraging parents to dream as big for their daughters as they do for their sons. Right. And it's just as simple as that. Right. You know, that change starts, and then that change starts at every level, right. at home, at school, at right. workplace, right. at society, at every level. Right. So that's I guess, how I would think. I guess proof of the pudding is in the eating. We are engaging with the men. We have two very successful men here on stage exactly. with us, yeah. talking very candidly. I mean, yeah. you know, that really is perfect. But uh, uh, Raghurai, sir, if, if I could just ask you, you know, it's almost a cliche now to say that when you talk about women's rights and, and you know, gender equality. It's not about how you bring up your girls, but it's now about how you bring up your boys. But do you believe that that's a message that we've really taken out there beyond, you know, a certain section of society? The message? Beyond, has, is really gone out there? I think in uh, educated families and urban families, mm. there's a big change, you know, mm. for sure. Mm. Uh, the fact is that you know, first of all, I think, you know, what is very important mm. for a family that to give sense of well-being mm. to every child right. and treat them as equal, you know. Right. And once they have that sense of well-being and awareness mm. that they stand on equal grounds, when they go into the world, they demand that space. 
And then, of course, it's left to the big politicians and bureaucrats to make a difference on a larger scale <laughs> in those public spaces, you know. And <laughs> well, you guys have taken over the country now. <laughs> no, we all have to do that. Not only politicians, every one of us. We must give them equal space, there's no doubt about it. But women have been left behind, there's no doubt. I mean, look, I met a person about two or three days ago. And he has three daughters. And the wife was also there. I said, uh, now three daughters is enough. You have to educate them. You have to do all these things. Or it's, article, it's not so cheap. <clears throat> she said to me, she said, That sense of larka is still very much part of our society. That's what we've not been able that to sort is, of break out of. The mindset that. problem. And, that, and, that and I told them, I said, suppose it's a girl again. Then, hmm. what will you do? Hmm. There was no answer. And they will always, hmm. the man will always blame the woman that she is the one who is delivering girls, never realizing that he's that equally it's, it's, responsible. It's, it's, right, absolutely. That is fact, the tragedy is that is taking place <laughs> yes. today where many women right. are thrown out of the house. Hmm not realizing that they're not responsible, you're equally responsible for that. Absolutely. And that somehow has not gone into people mm. as yet. Aarti, this is probably your experience, that this is what you want to do behind the girl. You're saying that we have to do what we have to do, 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 what we have to do. This is understood, this is now done. We just have to go after it. But I would imagine that there must be, sometimes there will be a lot of frustration. ऐसे सिचुएशन को देखके इट्स जस्ट नॉट चेंजिंग फास्ट इनफ पहले जब भी मैं पहले तो मैं सिटी में जॉब करती थी जब मेरा जो सेक्टर में मैंने चूज किए हैं मैं अपना सेक्टर में गई काम करने के लिए ग्रासरूट लेवल में तो ज़्यादा लोग उसको एक्सेप्ट नहीं किए पहली बार वो क्या कर लेगी वो तो शहर में रहती � वो कुछ चेंज नहीं कर पाएगा हमको बहुत सहना पड़ा और सबको लेकर हमको काम करना है ये मेरा दिमाग मैंने रखी और सबको एकाधी संगठन इसमें सिर्फ औरत लोग नहीं थी लड़का लोग को भी मैंने बुलाया और सभा की उसमें संगठन की चलो हमको कुछ करना है आगे बढ़ना है ऐसे अगर इतना सारा जो चीज़ आता है सरकार का ट्वेंटी का जो पावर है पंचायत लेवल में उसको हम ठीक यूटिलाइज करेंगे हमको किसका जरूरत नहीं है हेल्प का करना सिर्फ गवर्नमेंट का पैसा को हमको यूटिलाइज करना है और सबको शहर जैसे हमको सर चीज को सार का लोगों को देखना नहीं है हमारा गांव में हम कर पाएंगे तो इसी हिसाब से हम गांव में जो भी जरूरत था एडल्ट एजुकेशन हमने किया है स्मॉल इंडस्ट्री अभी शुरुआत कर रहे हैं और महिला के लिए स्वतंत्र जो होता है शौचालय वो भी हमने पहली बार गांव में किया है स्वच्छ भारत का काम भी किया है वहाँ पे एक सवाल तो वो सब जो आप पूछते थे कि वो क्या कर पाएगी वो लड़की है वो क्या कर पाएगी अब आपको देख के क्या बोलते हैं हाँ वो तो धीरे-धीरे मेरे साथ शामिल हो रहे हैं अच्छा वही � but yes. the underlying issue Ji. is the utilization of your authority, your power, mm. with the funds available mm. and without any corruption. Mm. Then without people corruption. begin right. to believe in you. Yeah. You right. see, this is yeah. the difference between the, the government mm. and these kind of young people who've come into doing things, you know, right. for the country right. and for the people around them. Right. So do this it makes a lot of difference. Despite having all the odds no stacked up against it, she's committed. She's right. here to right. make a difference right. to all of us, right. and not just women also. Right. Was right. that your experience, ma'am, with all those naysayers, perhaps saying, "What is this going to do? What is she going to do? What is you know? What is going to be the legacy? What is you know? Did, did you have? Did you sort of? Well, you know, there's so many problems. When I was, <clears throat> I, I was asked to give an opinion in a matter, hmm. and the solicitor briefed me, and I gave the opinion, and the opinion was sent to the client. 
It was written XYZ company, mm. so nobody knew who the company was. Mm. When it was sent to them, they sent it back to the solicitor saying, we don't want a woman's opinion. And the solicitor explained, no, she's a young uh, barrister, she's done extremely well in the bar, she's very competent, but they would have none of it. Wow. And then, they, then so the solicitor had, so he didn't pay me. And the solicitor didn't know what to do, so he sent it to the senior most lawyer in the Calcutta High Court. And, but he sent my opinion along with it. And after two, three months, the senior lawyer sent it back with one line. I endorsed the opinion of Leela Singh. Now that client had to pay 10 times the amount. I see. And, <laughs> but he got a male opinion, right. you see? Yeah. So it was as bad as that, I see. you know? I see. It was just not easy. Right. To get into the profession was extremely right. difficult. Right. Uh, Mr. Sachin Choudhury, who later became the finance minister, mm. I went to his chamber to join his chamber. Mm. He said to me, young woman, this is not a profession for, uh, for women, mm. go and get married. So I said, Mr. Choudhury, I'm already married. Oh, married. We must have a child. Yes. So I said to Mr. Chaudhry, I have a child. Then he said, it's not fair to have one child. You must have two children. <laughs> so I said, as it happens, I have two children. <laughs> then he was very stumped. He said, he said, you're a persistent young woman. Come and join, come and join my chamber. You will do well at the bar. And then he helped me after that. But I'll say, you know, how much resistance there was right. even for you to join the profession. So it was a totally different story from now. Right. So, I mean, I, I went through well, a great deal. Right. And when I became a, a judge, <clears throat> once in the courtroom in Delhi High Court, I'm sitting in the courtroom, and suddenly I find a huge crowd of people have gathered. So I said to, you know, to the reader, to the Peshkar, I said, some new case has been allotted. Why is there such a crowd come? He said, no, no, Charan Singh, Prime Minister, hai. Unhone logon ko bulaya hai, Delhi ghumne ke liye. <laughs> <laughs> so this that is truly priceless. No, that that is really and, this is, and the zoo and the Delhi High Court very close to each other. <laughs> so, it was, so that's how it was. No, it's not so. <clears throat> You've spoken very candidly about <clears throat> the role of your wife and women in your life and just how important they were. But many would say, what is it? Why are men so insecure? What? Pardon? Why are men so insecure? Isn't that where it stems from? That is are unfortunate. You towards him only? I think. I <laughs> <laughs> Not I think at all. <laughs> Not at all. Sorry. I wouldn't dare do that. I think no. he. <laughs> 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 you see, I like to say, it is not feel, making them feel insecure. I think the society itself has made them feel that way. And that, unless that society changes, that insecurity will not go. How much you might speak to them, make right. speeches, make um, laws in the um, parliament, mm. and then they will dispense them in the courts, mm. it's not going to change. The thing is, basically, the society has to start thinking mm. that we have made them insecure. And we must take those steps whereby this insecurity disappears from them. Right. I'm going to start wrapping now, but Nidhi, what do you believe is the one real thing that we can do to sort of bring about this change, which we, we all are in com complete agreement with has to be done. Yeah. We're not seeing enough of it on the ground. But what is the one thing that you believe we ought to do immediately? I all mean, of us. You know, like just everything that we've been talking about really sort of work towards that mindset change. Mm. Really work Which towards... Is the toughest challenge. It's the it, toughest, it's just... but we have to address mm. it. We cannot not address it. We can have as many policies, legal reforms, and everything work on implementation of policy, but it will not happen till we really reach the minds and hearts, you know, and think of equality from that lens. Just before we end this, uh, I want to ask everybody the one piece of advice that you got, which you believe that you got, not that you want to give, but that you got, and the one thing that you believe that you ought to have been told when you were 21. You don't need to think, but I'm going to ask you last. I'm going to ask you last. Love women. <laughs> and give them all that you can give them. That is one thing I've always believed. <laughs> And I'll continue to believe till I go to the grave and meet the beautiful women that are waiting for us in heaven. Right. <laughs> right. Raghu Rai, sir. 
What do I? The one piece of advice that you would like to give women today, and the one thing that you wish you had been told when you were 21. Very bold. Look, bolna. उधर का काम है उन ऊपर वाले लोगों का नीचे वाले लोग धरती पे जीते हैं देखिए नो एडवाइस लिव अबंडेंटली एंड हैप्पीली नो मैटर हु यू आर मैन वुमन चाइल्ड गर्ल बॉय इफ दैट एक्सप्रेशन इज नॉट देयर योर क्रिएटिव अर्जेस गेट ब्लॉक देन यू आर अ डेड पर्सन सो इट गोस फॉर एवरीबॉडी एंड व्हेन यू से यू नो व्हाई मेन आर सो इनसिक्योर I tell you, I promise you, I have never ever felt that. Yeah. Even my gir last girlfriend was ditching me. I said, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I was, I was pained, but I was never insecure. You know, these are two different things. So you know, please don't use the same yardstick for everybody. Fair different men, different women, children, they behave differently. Right. Right. And the advice I didn't get. I don't live life like that. Sir. I promise you. I live in today, and I'm a very happy person with my daughters, with my friends, with with relatives, with everybody else around right. me. So I don't have anything. That's to wonderful. Say. Oh, more yeah, people I'm have no regrets, right? Arthi, one thing you have to say that you want to say today's women, or that you want to say today's girls, that you want to do the same thing as you want to do. I want to say that I want to say that. पहले मैं बोल चुकी हूँ स्काइज नॉर्दा लिमिन फ्लाई फ्लाई आज यू कैन यू आर वेलकम यू आर सेलिब्रेट यू आर होम यू आर सेफ यू नो आई वुड एक्चुअली थिंक दैट आई हैव टू से दैट आई एम सो इंस्पायर्ड बाय यंग पीपल टुडे एंड यू नो यंग पीपल हु आर इन टू डायलॉग एंड डिस्कसिंग गवर्नेंस डेमोक्रेसी जेंडर इशूज एंड आई विश वेन आई वॉज ट्वेंटी वन I had the strength and ability and confidence to be able to do that and contribute, you know, um, to create that society. So I, I do wish, and that is what I want to even tell the younger generation that, you know, you can make that change. Don't look at others. You know, government will do this, or you know, schools will do that. Right. You will make that change. Right. So that's what I would say. Right. Ma'am, I'll give you the last one. Yeah, well, what I would tell all the women here. You are going to have children, or you have children. Bring up your sons like you bring up your daughter. Not the way the, they say. Bring up your daughter like you bring up your son. The other way around. <laughs> bring up your sons like you bring up your daughter, so that they learn the tenderness which Ms. Ms. Mr. Farooq talked about. That you learn that tenderness, and they learn that attitude of giving, which is so important in society. You know, the moment you do service, it brings you so much joy. And that's why women are very happy normally, because they do the service in the house. Right. And if the boys learn how to do that service, they will also be very happy human beings. So if you bring up your sons like you bring up your daughter, there'll be a much more equal world. Right. And I think that's a very important advice to give them. And on the lighter side, I'll say to the young women of 21, don't cross the road while holding a mobile. <laughs> <laughs> It's dangerous. Or take a selfie yeah. <laughs> while you're at the ledge yeah. or something. Yeah. Like Absolutely, that. yes. <laughs> Given now that we are the country with the maximum number of selfie deaths, that's just that's just shocking. But it just shows our obsession with that uh, phone camera. But thank you all so much for taking out the time thank to speak you. to us. Thank, thank, thank you very much. We can thank you.